Hi guys, welcome to today's yoga practice. We're gonna start standing tall in our mountain. Let's begin by rolling those shoulders down and back, opening up those palms nice and wide, core's tight, bum is tucked and our knees are soft. We're standing tall and grounded here in our mountain posture. Taking some nice deep inhales and exhales. Let's begin by lifting each one of our toes and just spreading them nice and wide on your mat, really grounding through each toe. And once we've spread our toes nice and wide, let's roll forward onto our toes, come up nice and high into a tiptoe, and back, let's plant through our heels. So again, planting through all four corners of our feet. Wonderful, inhale, let's sweep our arms up nice and high. Exhale, swan dive forward, allowing that belly to rest down onto those knees. Inhale, reverse your swan dive, inhale up. Exhale, swan dive forward. So we're beginning to bring our breath and our movement together as we warm up here in our yoga practice. From the side, looks like this. So continuously using your breath and your movement here in your swan dive forward fold. Wonderful, let's do two more just like this. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sinking our sit bones down and back. Let's find chair. So our heart center is lifted. We're sitting down into that chair. Our belly is pulled in nice and tight. Shoulders relaxed into our spine. Building some heat here. We're just gonna hold our chair for a couple moments. And exhale, let it go forward, fold. Allowing those hands to rest down on your mat or on your thighs or maybe you like them on your yoga block, listening to our bodies here today, just creating space. Inhale, sweeping those arms up, coming back into our chair posture. Any of the hand options that resonate with you, so you could have hands at heart center, or out in front of you, or up by your head, or maybe you like hands on your hips. Personal preference. Taking some nice deep breaths. Let's just begin to rock into those tiptoes, side to side. So from the front, we're just lifting side to side in that chair pose. Just getting some movement through those feet, giving us some nice rolling foot motions here. Should start to begin to feel a little bit maybe burning through the quads. That's okay, we're building that heat. If it's too much for you, you can come out and just find a little less sensation maybe up here. Again, it's all about listening to our bodies here. Finding that chair posture. Now let's ground ourselves down, sinking those sit bones down a little further. Let's take our right hand to our right sit bone, our left hand to our right knee, and we begin to twist towards that right knee. So as we twist, we wanna keep our knees roughly in one line and just begin to twist towards that knee. Getting a little rotation here in through our spine, Exhale, back down and forward. This time, let's come left hand to left sit bone, let right hand to left knee, and twist towards that left leg. Again, getting that little bit of spinal rotation here as we warm up. Just gentle movements. Exhaling back down and forward. Inhale, arms up nice and high. Exhale, swan dive forward. And again, let's just rest here for a couple moments. Grounding through our hands, nice soft knees, letting that forehead relax down. And if it feels good to you, maybe you choose to grab arm to arm and we shake side to side. Totally up to you here in this practice. This is your practice, this is your movement. Wonderful. Let's plant our hands down onto our mats, step our feet back and press it back into a downward facing dog. Now, if down dog is too much for us here today, we can choose to come down into a puppy position or we could also choose to come down into child's pose. So listening to our bodies with where we're at today. 
Wonderful. Let's inhale forward into plank. You have that option to drop your knees. Exhale, baby cobra, elbows tuck to our sides. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, press it back. All the way up to our down dog. Let's do that one more time. So you have that option to drop it down to your knees or you can go into full. Inhale forward using that breath, exhaling down into crocodile and we inhale up into that baby cobra. Exhale back into down dog or child's. And let's just begin to walk our feet, pedaling them up towards our hands. And then we roll one vertebrae at a time all the way up. Inhale, exhale down into mountain pose. Okay, let's get a little bit of lateral flexion going. So taking our left arm, reaching it up high towards the sky, right arm comes down towards our feet. We're just gonna reach up and over. You should feel a beautiful opening through that left side body. Taking some breaths and really just trying to fill those left lungs expanding through that left rib cage. Reaching down with that right arm, creating a little bit more space on that left side, letting those left hips float out. Inhale back up through center, let that left side go. Inhale, right arm up high towards the sky. Comes up and over, left arm comes down towards the mat. We're going to reach that left arm way, way down, right arm way, way up, creating space this time through our right side body, breathing into the right rib cage. Wonderful, this is so nice. Exhale back down through center. Inhale, sweeping our arms up high towards the sky. Exhale, sinking our sit bones down and back into that chair. Inhale, lift, exhale, coming down into chair. Let's do a couple more. Inhale, lift, exhale, chair. Inhale, lift, one more, just like this, exhale, chair. Inhale, lift, up high towards the sky. Exhale, pressing our hips forward. We're gonna reach our arms slightly back, coming into a gentle back bend. So taking that gaze up towards the ceiling, if it works for you here today, we're engaging our glutes, rolling our way into our toes or the balls of our feet, arms coming back by our ears, lifting that chin slightly. Wonderful, supported back bend here today. Exhale, let it go forward fold. You guys are so amazing. This is wonderful movement for our spine here today. To step back with our right leg, opening it up, cartwheeling our arms here. Let's come up into warrior two. So our right foot is parallel with the back edge of our mat. Our toes are pointed in the opposite direction, guiding us forward as our arms extend forward. Let's cartwheel our arms down, left arm down, right arm comes up. We find side angle here. Now side angle is so wonderful. I love how it stretches through that hip. If you want a little bit more stretching through the hip, let's come into an extended side angle, dropping that palm down towards our mat, extending nice and long here, rolling that top shoulder open. Happy smiling faces here, don't forget to smile. We're enjoying this wonderful stretch and movement of our body. Nice deep breaths here, in and out through your nose. Let's cartwheel those arms all the way down to the mat, walking them along the long edge, turning our feet parallel with the long edge of our mat. Inhaling, lifting through heart center halfway. Exhale, let it go, allowing those sit bones to rise up towards the sky. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, let it go. Now I want you to notice every time we do this that you're going to relax a little deeper into the stretch. Inhale, one more time, halfway lift. Exhale, relaxing down. Allowing those sit bones to come up high towards the sky, allowing your hands to guide your forehead down towards the mat. 
taking a nice deep breath. Inhales and exhales here. Most important part here is to pay attention to that breath. Staying here in the present moment here on your mat. Becoming aware of any thoughts that are coming in and out of your head. And just noticing them, not judging them, not changing them, just simply noticing them. Take notice and just let them pass. We're just not trying to change them. We're not trying to dwell on them. We're just simply noticing whatever might arise. Taking a nice deep inhale here. Exhale, sinking our sit bones down. We turn our heels in. So we're gonna come into just a supported position here with our hands. Now you can choose to stay here or you can choose to come into a prayer position Bringing that body up tall, allowing those elbows to press onto the insides of the knees, giving ourselves a nice inner thigh stretch here. Taking a nice deep breaths here. You got this. Exhale, hands down to the mat, letting those sit bones rise. Let's walk our hands around that left leg. Step the right leg in. Inhale, lift. Exhale, swan dive forward. This time, we're going to pick up our left leg. So I'm just coming to the other side here for you. We're gonna pick up our left leg, step it on back, dropping that foot, cartwheel those arms up to the sky, we find warrior two. Wonderful, that was an easy transition. Dropping those shoulders down into our spine, heart center lifts, our arms extend wall to wall. Taking a couple breaths here in your warrior two, standing strong and grounded. Let's cartwheel those arms, right arm down, left arm up high towards the sky, coming into our side angle. Now again, if you want a little bit more of a stretch through the top of that hip, you could choose to come into extended side angle, dropping the palm down above our head. Just making sure that that arm doesn't cover your face. You wanna roll that shoulder back and open. That's the most important part. Again, getting that lateral stretch to the side body. So if you start to feel overwhelmed or you're starting to feel like, oh, this is tough, make sure you bring your awareness back to your breath. Maybe you count your breaths, your inhales and your exhales. Maybe you count the cadence, the speed of your breath. Just giving yourself something to focus on, something to bring you back into the present moment. Cartwheeling those arms down to the mat. Let's walk our hands down center, bringing our toes in, kicking our heels out this time. Okay, so we've still in that wide straddle stance. Toes in, heels out. We're gonna bring our hands to the outsides of our feet. And I just want you to give yourself a little bit of a tug. And we're just gonna bend and extend each leg. Just allowing those sit bones to kind of relax into the space that we're coming into. Now if our, leg, our outsides of our feet aren't available to us, you could just simply grab onto your um, calves or maybe you're grabbing onto your thighs. Again, we're just trying to find that lateral movement in the body. A little bit of titration here. Okay, so planting our hands down onto the mat, you could use a block if it feels good to you. Bringing that heart center down towards the mat. Maybe you wanna allow, if you have a block, you could allow your forehead to rest onto the block. Just finding a place of comfort. You could just, again, just do it like we did this last time with your hands guiding you down. Now I want you to notice that as your heels are kicked out and your toes are turned in, that we're feeling a stretch up the sides of our calves in through our extensors here. This is a lovely stretch. If we spend a lot of time walking or running, these are some muscles that get quite tight and sometimes they can cause a little bit of foot pain and foot aggravation. So we just wanna make sure that we're allowing them some grace here, a little bit of space to find some movement. Let's begin to walk our hands around that right leg this time. Taking that left leg, let's step it on in. Inhale, reverse that swan dive up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Let's step it back into our downward facing dog. And let's give ourselves a little bit of a core workout. You guys ready for this? 
It's going to be fun. Lift your right leg up high towards the sky. Let's inhaling it through. And then exhale as it comes through center body. Right elbow. Inhale that right leg up to the sky. Let's inhale halfway through. Exhale. Left elbow. Right elbow. Left elbow. Two more. Inhale. And back to that downward facing dog. So we're gonna do it on the other side this time. And I'm just gonna show you a differentiation. So you can keep going in through the down dog if you were doing it last time, that's totally good. If you need a little bit of a modification, this is our modification. So from puppy, we take a nice deep inhale. Everybody kick that left leg out behind us. Exhale, elbow towards our knee. And again, if we can't keep it lifted, we can drop it down onto the mat. Inhale, lift, exhale. Opposite elbow, so over to that right side. Inhale, lift. Exhale, left. Inhale, lift. Exhale, right. So this is your modification is to do it from puppy. We can keep going here. Inhale, left elbow. Exhale. Inhale, right elbow. Exhale. Last one, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. Wonderful, let's drop it down. You guys did so good. Press it back into your child's pose. Whew, talk about a little bit of power yoga here. Taking some breaths, allowing ourselves to ground back onto our mat to find that parasympathetic state, that relaxation state. So I just want you here in this child's pose. So whether your forehead is on the mat or maybe your stacked forehead on wrists or fists, or maybe you like the yoga block underneath that forehead, wherever it is that you are at in your child's pose today, I just want to keep your head down and forward. And we're going to just take that eye gaze. So just moving our eyes, taking our eyes over to the right hand side. So keep looking at that right elbow crease over on that right hand side of the room, whatever it is that you can try and bring those eyes to keep trying to look at without moving our head. When you feel the urge to yawn, swallow, or just simply move your mouth, I want you to bring your eye gaze back through center. Once you've yawned or swallowed or decided to smack your lips or whatever that might be, bringing that gaze back to center. And this time, let's take the eye gaze over to the left. Just looking off to the left here. Left elbow crease or whatever it is that you see on that left side of the room. For me, it's my slippers. So I'm gonna keep focusing on my slippers. Left side of the room. When you feel that urge to yawn or swallow or simply smack your lips together, I want you to bring that eye gaze back to center. Take some couple deep breaths here whenever you're back to center. And I just want you to notice how your body's feeling. Do you feel a little bit more relaxed than you did a couple minutes ago? Or a couple seconds ago even? Where's your head space at? Are you noticing that you're here on this mat in this moment in this room and focused on that? Or are you thinking about what you're going to make for your next meal? Are you thinking about tomorrow? What is it that's coming to mind for you? Can you keep yourself here in the present moment, here in your body, in this space? And if you can't, that's okay too. We all have our days and we're not judging ourselves here. We're just simply being, we're simply noticing, becoming essentially like the uh, person looking down on ourselves, just gazing at ourselves. We are the observer. Simply noticing. 
So that eye movement that we just did, the whole idea of that is to start to engage that parasympathetic nervous system, to start to engage our body to relax and to come out of that stress state, especially after going through that power yoga style core exercise, right? Those downward dog knees, those are those are definitely challenging and they definitely challenge our sympathetic nervous system and cause a little bit of stress sometimes for us. So let's inhale forward and coming and finding a seated position forward. Okay, well, we've been working a little bit on some core strength, so why not continue on that core strength? Well, so sitting up nice and tall here, heart center is lifted. I want you to kind of lift the butt cheeks out of the way so that you can find the your sit bones. I like to say you move the junk out of the trunk, right? You're gonna find those sit bones, heart center is lifted, so we're not collapsed, we're lifted, belly is nice and tight. And from here, our feet are planted. Now you have the option here in your boat, you can simply stay here. Okay, this can be option number one. Option number two is we lift one leg. And then you can choose to lift the other leg. Option number three is we lift both legs. I start to shake the minute we go into both legs. So completely up to you, using that core strength to keep you lifted, whether it's one leg or two legs, your choice. If you want option number four, so option those first three options, we're just simply holding steady. Option number four, we're gonna row the boat. Or you can do it for one leg. You can do one leg, row the boat. Or you can do two legs. Let's go for four, three, two. Let it go, come into that butterfly and just relax down and forward. Woo. Taking ourselves in to a little bit of challenge and then relaxing out of it. That is so important. Let's try our reverse plank. Legs out in front of you, pointing those toes. Hands come behind us. Our fingers toward, point towards our bum. We're going to press into our hands and we're going to lift our sit bones up to the sky. Taking a nice deep inhale here. Exhale. Lift those sit bones up towards the sky, bringing that belly button up nice and high towards the top of the ceiling. You can do this. Keeping it lifted here. Taking a couple deep belly breaths. Can you feel that belly? Pull it in nice and tight. You can do this. Bring that awareness. Let's go. and exhale, let it go. This time coming forward into a seated forward fold. So let's allow our back to just round, allow that forehead to round. The one thing I don't want us doing is pulling on our legs and trying to make our body come into a position it's not ready to go into. So we're just simply relaxing down and forward. Now let's take notice, where are your fingers at? Can you find out where your fingers are located right now in conjunction with your legs? Okay, so my fingers are just about at my ankle bones. So we're gonna try and make those fingers go a little further. So I want you to come back up and in, and this is gonna get a little funny, and that's okay, okay? So we're just going to massage out our forehead. I know you're thinking, Kayla, why are we massaging out our forehead? I needed to get for more forward in my forward fold. But we have a lovely fascial line that comes from the tip of our forehead all the way around our back, all the way out to the tip of our big toe. So we're gonna use this fascial line to our advantage to come a little bit more into that forward fold. So you can massage right up into that hairline from that forehead into that hairline there. Okay, taking a nice deep inhale. Exhale, down and forward. Did you get a little further? Take note, where are you at? Did you get a little bit further? Was it a centimeter? Was it a whole finger length? Holy moly, I know I got like an inch and a half, maybe more. That's craziness, right? Okay, coming back up. I know you're thinking, Kayla, but I just went into the first forward fold without inhaling and lifting. That's okay, we'll see. You, you noted where you were this last time. So let's see. Now this time I want you to massage onto the top of your head. Oh yeah, 
It doesn't matter how many times we do this. We love this one. So massage into the top of your head. And I know, I don't know about you guys, but for myself, there's like this one point, usually right where my ponytail is. And it's like, oh, I didn't know I had a headache until I touched that little point. So totally up to you here. However you want to do this, that little point there, that's, that's where it's at for me. Massage it out, especially if you find a tender spot. How often do you get a head massage, really, hey? All right, a couple more. Take a nice deep inhale here. Exhale, down and forward. Did you get a little further? Do you notice a little bit more? Now, if you don't, that's okay too. Maybe your tightness is at your toes, so maybe you need to be massaging out those toes, right? Maybe, you're, maybe you need to go further back in your head all the way down to your neck. Finding out where those kinks are in that fascial line, allowing ourselves to stretch it a little further. Coming back in, let's crisscross our legs into a lotus. So we want one leg, I'm sorry, into a half lotus, one leg on top, one leg below. Sitting up nice and tall, let's drop our head off to the right. Now my husband always says I'm like Batman because my neck doesn't stretch very far, but it always feels like such a nice stretch when we get to stretch it. So I'm gonna show you a little stretch that we're going to do. If you get like chronic headaches or neck pain, these ones are great to do throughout the day. So we're dropping that ear down to the shoulder. And from here, now I want you to just turn your chin and look down at your shoulder as if you kind of want to smell your armpit. That's kind of the idea here. Nose towards shoulder. So you should feel this stretch all like kind of in these scalenes and through your stenocleidomastoid there. If you want a little bit more of a stretch, you can stretch that left arm out to the side. Holy moly, does that go right down through the shoulder? Oh yeah. And let's bring our, uh, uh, our ear back to our shoulder. And now this time, we're gonna stretch the front side. So I would just want you to lift your chin up towards the sky as if you're like a little bit snooty, right? We're a little bit posh. That chin comes up towards the sky. And this time you should feel these all oh, straight down here. Oh yeah, those suckers are tight, hey? Taking some breaths. Wonderful, here back down to our shoulder, coming back up through center. Ooh. Let's do the other side. Okay, left ear to the left, uh, left ear to the left side. And always in this ear to shoulder, you could extend that arm out. That does feel nice, it's a little bit tight, that's okay. And from here, we're gonna take that chin down towards our shoulder. Again here, if you wanna stretch it out. A little bit more, you could extend that arm out. Completely up to you. Good, ear back to shoulder. And this time, chin up to sky. A little bit posh, right? A little snooty. Getting the front side of that neck. Do you notice how it pulls onto your head, onto your ears, almost on through your temples? It's like the perfect headache spot. Especially if you like to clench your jaw like myself. Oh yeah, those suckers get real tight. And then ear back to shoulder. And let it go. Okay, this time we're gonna stretch our hip rotators. So in this half lotus position, one leg on top, one leg below. Now, if you're not quite at a point where your hips have the ability to go one leg on top, one leg below, you could also raise your hips up onto a yoga block or onto a bolster, a pillow. Um, you could also just simply go to the best extension of the position that you can get. So if this is where you're at, this is where you're at. You meet yourself with where you're at today here on this mat. From here, we're going to forward fold down and just begin to walk those hands forward. And you should notice whatever leg is on top that you're feeling this into your hip rotators on that side. Slowly walking back in. 
Good. Let's do the other side. So flip it on over. And let's walk forward. Stretch those hip rotators. Good. Let's come back in. And let's grab onto our knee and roll down onto our back. Knees coming in towards our chest. Let's just give ourselves a little rock out side to side. Maybe you like to do figure eights with your knees. Again, rocking out that low back. It's totally up to you. This is your position. All right, let's take that left leg out long. Flexing that foot, bringing that calf down to the mat. We're grabbing on to our right leg. We're going to bring that knee out and around our ribcage in towards our right shoulder. Giving ourselves a nice tug here, coming into our wind removing posture. Yes, folks, it is called wind removing posture. Can you imagine why? Don't be surprised if you surprise yourself in this wind removing posture. That's totally okay. Massaging out deep belly breaths, massaging out those deep internal organs on the inside of our right thigh. And taking that right leg out long, let's flex that calf, bringing the calf down, or flexing the foot, sorry, bringing the calf down onto the mat. Bringing that left knee up, let's grab on nice and tight. Bringing that knee out and around our rib cage, in towards that left shoulder. Grabbing on nice and tight here. Good. Now massaging out our in deep internal organs on that left side, taking nice, nice big deep belly breaths here. Wonderful, so good. Now we've been doing a lot of work through our lateral side body and through our inner thigh here today, which you probably noticed. So good to stretch out both sides of our body, right? Let's take that left leg out nice and long and bring our knees into our chest, taking our feet as up as if we're gonna stand on the ceiling. So we're gonna come into dead bug. So taking our yogi grip, two fingers onto our big toe and capping it off with our thumb. Now if two fingers is too much and you can't quite reach your feet, you could use a strap or a belt and put it up on the balls of your feet here. But today I don't have a strap to demo with, so I'm just going to show you with the yogi grip. So cap it off, pressing into our knuckles here, and we're going to press our heels up to the sky as if we're going to try and stand on the ceiling, dropping those shoulders down into our spine, down towards the mat, coming into that dead bug position, right? Now, you're probably like, well, Kayla, how does that look like a dead bug? Well, what does a beetle look like when it dies, right? He falls onto his back and his legs go up in the air, so this is where we're at. If you want to find some movement in your dead bug, you could choose to rock side to side, but keep it, those heels extending up high towards the sky. Drop those shoulders down, pulling with the arms, pressing with the feet, finding that beautiful dynamic tension here in your yoga practice. Exhale, let it go. Allow those palms of the feet to come together. Knees fall open. We find our supine butterfly right? Supine meaning face up. Bring your hands to our belly this time. I want us to imagine we're taking those deep belly breaths here. So I want you to feel the air move from your chest into through your ribs through to your belly and then when you exhale it goes belly, ribs, chest and helping your body guide that arrow feeling the movement through our hands right noticing the life within us and the power that we hold inside of our bodies noticing our breath here and how powerful it is and how it actually absorbs most of our abdomen as we breathe allowing that diaphragm to drop deep down into the belly 
As we inhale and exhaling, punching that diaphragm all the way up, allowing all the air to clear from our lungs, really becoming aware of the power of our breath and how their breath actually affects us. How does it make you feel? Can you feel the power within you? Can you feel that personal power? Can you feel that inner strength and that lovely beauty that each one of us holds inside? Good, bringing your knees up. We're gonna allow the knees to knock inward on each other, just creating a little bit of space here for our lower back. Just allowing those knees to knock inward. We're gonna, now this time, we're gonna practice our deep diaphragmatic breathing, right? So we're taking our hands under the sides of our ribs. Our deep diaphragmatic breathing means that we're horizontally breathing into our ribs. Imagine your ribs being like an accordion. We want to breathe out into the sides, right? Often we breathe into the upper chest, especially for stress or down and deep into the belly, right? When we're trying to practice those power breathing. I want us to breathe into the sides of your ribs. So bringing your palms under the sides of your ribs, fingers to point down towards your hips. And let's take a nice deep inhale. Filling up the sides of your ribs, expanding wide. Exhale, pressing with our hands, allowing those ribs to come back and in. Inhale, expand, press that ribs into your palms of your hands. Exhale, pressing the hands into the ribs. So noticing how the breath isn't filling the lower belly and it's not really filling the deep abdomen up high. It's really expanding laterally as that belly button pulls down into the spine. So you're really noticing that lateral movement through the ribs. I know this isn't an easy breath to practice, so I want you to keep trying to practice this, but the idea here is to teach our ribs to move, is to teach them to breathe properly so that we're not spending all that time in the (laughs) upper chest area, right? Notice, do your shoulders try and rise as you are breathing here? Or can you breathe into the sides of your ribs without moving your shoulders? How does that feel within your body? Becoming aware, just simply noticing. It doesn't mean that we need to change things. It doesn't mean anything is right or wrong. It just means that we're noticing with where we're at here today. And then maybe tomorrow it's a little different for you. And maybe the day after that, it's even more different. Again, it's just that body awareness, that awareness of self, that awareness of who we are here on this mat and simply showing up. The ability to show up here on this mat is the most important part. Hmm. All right, let's exhale those legs out nice and long, allowing those palms to come face up, relaxing those shoulders down into the spine. Now, as we come into our final Savasana, our relaxation pose here today, I want you to take a nice deep inhale here and exhale a big, loud, audible. <sighs> Letting out all that stress and frustration. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale, audible. <sighs> One more, inhale, exhale, (sighs) taking your arms, stretching them, big, long morning stretch above us. Good, exhale, arms, maybe your arms come wide, coming into a chest expansion, or maybe they just simply come down by our sides, palms up for receiving energy and palms down for grounding into the universe. Allowing our gaze to soften and our awareness to turn inside. Maybe we bring that awareness to that breath and we count our inhales and our exhales. That's one of my favorite ones to do. So if we're counting our inhales, we count inhale one. And when we count our exhale, we count two. And I just want you to count inhale, then three, exhale, then four. And you get the idea here as we count all the way up to 10. Now, if you lose your count at any point, you just start back at one. It doesn't matter if you lose the count. But the idea here is that it gives your ego mind something to focus on as we begin to relax here into our final Savasana. Now, counting your breath is not for you. That's totally okay. You can simply come into your Savasana at any point, whatever works for you, but listening to our bodies. So I'm going to give you a couple moments here to come into your Savasana, and I will guide you out when the time has come. Enjoy.
beginning to bring awareness back to our bodies, back into the space. Let's wiggle our fingers and our toes, roll our wrists and our ankles, rock our head, roll our hands side to side. Just whatever movement feels good here in your body. Maybe you choose to bend the knees and keep yourself a little bit of a windshield wiper. It's completely up to you, but we're just beginning to bring awareness and movement back into our body. Let's extend one arm up nice and high. We'll begin to roll into that side body. Taking as much time as we need here today in this moment, in this position. When you're ready, we're going to slowly begin to make our way to an easy seated position near the top of our mat. Thank you all for joining me today. Thank you for joining in the practice and watching this video. The light in me bows and honors the light in you. Namaste.